Hi everyone, so today we're going to be looking at the um, consequences of the Black Death, so we'll have a look at some short term and long term consequences. We're going to see how many people were affected by the Black Death, um, how it upset the balance of power in Europe and specifically in England at the time, and the short and long term consequences. Okie dokie, so let's start with the feudal system. Now, you may have come across across the feudal system when you were looking at the Battle of Hastings and the Norman Conquest. And this is something that William the Conqueror brought in when he came over from France and conquered England. Now, the idea of the feudal system was it is this pyramid of power, okay? And it's to keep the social order. It's to make sure that everybody knows their place. And um, there's a, a very, very, um, obvious power structure within the country. So right at the top, we've got the king. If you want to take it one step further, the person above the king is God. Okay, so you've got God, you've got nobles, you've got knights, and then you've got the peasants. So the idea is that everybody in the feudal system gives something to the next uh, ring down and gets something from them as well. All right, so the king gives land to the nobles and in return gets money and knights. The nobles give land to the knights and in return get military protection and service. And the knights give land and protection to the peasants and in return they get food and services. Okay, so at the bottom of the ladder we've got the peasants. So the people who hold the power, okay, really are the nobles and the knights. They've got the power and the peasants are the workforce. OK, and that's the way it's worked. So the Norman Conquest was 1066 and we're now in the 1300s and that's stayed that way for hundreds of years. And everybody kind of knows their place. They know what their role is in life. You didn't move throughout this feudal system where you were born. If you were born a peasant, you believe that you were meant to be a peasant. God had placed you there. If you were born a noble, that's your God given right to be a noble and to be um, above everybody else in the ring of power. Now the Black Death turns this on its head and we'll have a look at why, okay? So the Black Death had a huge influence on the way people thought about life. Some lived wild, immoral lives, others fell into deep despair, while many chose to accept their fate, okay? We looked at this, this little passage in the first video in this series. Many people were angry and bitter and blamed the church. Some historians think this um, helps the growth of a new religion in the 15th century, which is the 1400s. It could also be argued that the Black Death had brought down rich and poor people alike. Having faced, now this is what we're focusing on here, having faced and survived the plague, people at the bottom of society were more prepared to question their position in society. OK, the Black Death didn't discriminate. It didn't say, right, well, you're rich, I'm going to leave you. You're poor, I'm going to kill you. It tackled everybody um, equally, which meant that, that people thought that there may be some, something wrong with their social structure. OK, now the balance of power shifts during this time. And I'm just going to do a little diagram to help us to understand how. So we've got um, pre-Black Death. So before the Black Death and post Black Death. OK. So we've got peasants and then jobs. And we've got that on both sides. OK, I'm just going to do this by dots and these numbers are absolutely by no means accurate. Um, it's just to give you an idea of the numbers that we've got here. So before the Black Death, we've got, oh, sorry, that's not the biggest dot. There we go. Peasants. Again, this is just to give you an idea. Don't worry about the numbers. Don't count them or anything like that. So we've got a lot of peasants. And then we've got a certain number 
of jobs, okay? There's only a certain number of lords. There's only a certain amount of land. So let's make this easy. Okay, so peasants versus jobs. We've got a lot of peasants and we've got not as many jobs. So what this means is there is a balance of power here, which means that the lords hold the power. And the reason is all of these peasants want these jobs. So they're going to be fighting for them. And if the peasants want a job, they will accept probably very low wages for it. So you imagine that you're this guy and you want this job, okay? And I'm your landlord and I am offering you this job. And you come up to me and you say, right, I want this job. And again, this is just an example. I want five pounds a day to do that job. And I say, I'm not paying you five pounds a day. That's far too much. And this person comes along and says, hey, if he wants five pound a day, I'll do it for one pound a day, right? Because one pound a day is better than nothing. And if that means he's going to get that job, then I'm winning, okay? As the landlord, as the lord, I'm saying, right, I'm not going to pay you five. I'm going to pay this guy one, okay? So there's a lot of competition. And it means that I can pay very, very low wages because you want my job. You have to have my job. And if I'm only going to give you a pound, you're going to accept that pound because you've got to feed your family, okay? And if you say, no, I'm not going to take that job for a pound, well, tough luck because that's how much I'm going to pay you. And if you don't accept my job, there's no other job out there for you, okay? So I hold all of that power. Now, what the Black Death does is it reverses that because in post Black Death times, when you've lost between a third, and please don't count my dots, a third and half of the population, you've not lost your amount of jobs. Okay, you've got, I'm just going to rub some of these out just so it's, it's a bit more um, obvious. What you've now got is a switch in the balance of power because here, the peasants hold the power, okay? Because it's absolutely the opposite scenario. So in this situation, if this peasant wants this job and he comes and he says, I want five pound a day to do that job. And I say, no, hang on. I was paying you one pound a day this peasant would say, well, fine, I'll go for that job, okay? And I'll ask them for five pound a day because if you don't get me to do your job, you're gonna run out of people. And the lords actually find themselves in a position where they're having to um, pay high wages and they're having to, what they actually do. And this is important because what you've got to realize is this balance of power shifting is very dangerous for the lords because there isn't as many of them right if you think about the phrase as power in numbers there's a lot more peasants than there are lords and what the lords are, and the knights and the nobles are worried about is the peasants thinking hang on why are we living like this we should just challenge them and starting to live a little bit above the station. So um, I'll share another screen in a second because I've just remembered I've got something that shows the way that this worked really nicely. Um, the peasants start demanding more and they start thinking, hang on, we can get a little bit more out of this. Um, so I'm just gonna stop that screen share and just go on to this. Um, share that again. Okay, so if you have a look on this one. So medieval lords were not happy with the outcome of the Black Death and how it changed the balance of power. I'll just make this a bit bigger. Uh, they used the Statute of Labourers, which we'll come on to a second in a second. So by 1363, they were fed up with the peasants dressing above their station, which means that they weren't wearing the clothes they were doing. They were dressing more like lords. They were a bit like, look at me. Um, and brought in laws, which meant that they some uh, sorry, which meant that the way someone dressed showed their status. 
So it was very popular, and these shoes will make you laugh, it was very popular at the time to have toe extensions on your shoes. So from 1363, depending on your class, um, this is how long your toe extensions could be. So if you were a noble, your toe extensions on your shoes, this bit here, could be 24 inches long. Go and get a ruler and see how long that is. And imagine walking around with points on your shoes like that. Gentlemen, up to 12 inches. Merchants, up to 6.5 inches. And peasants were only also only able, able to eat basic food stuff. So they were trying to put the peasants back in their place. OK. Um, and that was because oh, can't get out of this now. Oh, there we go. That was because um, they didn't want them challenging their position in society. They wanted to keep them exactly where they were. So I'm just going to go back to our original presentation. Here we go. So they wanted to keep that balance of power as it was. So in a way to keep it like this, the Lords holding the power, they brought something in in 1351 called the Statute of Labourers. And what this did was um, it froze wages at 13.48 prices and that is um, pre-black death okay and that meant that this five pounds now couldn't be offered the peasants could still only have one pound even though they knew that they were more valuable so when we're having a look at the long-term consequences of the black death that's something that we need to bear in mind the peasants knew that they were more powerful the lords with the shoes, with the food that they could eat, with the wages that they were giving them, they were trying to contain them. OK, and the peasants were getting really, really fed up of this system. They were saying, look, we've survived a black death. We've had to watch our families die. We've had to watch our friends die. We are now physically more valuable because of what we've just talked about there, the amount of jobs that there were. Um, we are sick of being treated like this. We should have more money now because we're worth more. We should be able to dress in better clothes. We should have better food to eat. And this smated um, in the 1381 Peasants' Revolt. OK, the, the, the Black Death isn't the only cause of the Peasants' Revolt, but everything that happened... So the, the statute of labor is in 1351, the way the king was acting in that, you will cover this. Um, but one of the main consequences of the Black Death in 1348 was the peasants getting really, really angry with the way that things were run. And in 1381 did revolt against the government and against the king. Okay, so obviously, if we're gonna recap uh, between, uh, this is one of the one of the main effects of the population was the fact that uh, sorry uh, of the black death was the fact that the popula population reduced which if you think about it the population reducing probably meant that the quality of life might have gone up slightly because there would have been more food to go around but also less workers um so that's something to weigh up um it upset the balance of power by making the peasants more valuable because there were less of them and the same amount of jobs so the laws needed them more than they needed needed the lords um, and the short and long-term consequences was the amount of people that were dead and then eventually the 50, 1351 statute of labourers which then had a knock-on effect the peasants getting more and more frustrated with their situation and revolting against the king and the government in 1351 uh, sorry 1381 so that's the next thing that you'll be moving on to will be the peasants revolt um, and it's worth bearing in mind the effects and the impact that the Black Death had on causing that. OK, so I hope you found that useful. Um, please feel free to go back if you've if this is the first video you've watched and have a look at the other ones on the Black Death and see how it all um, ties in together. I hope that's been useful for you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in and I will hopefully see you in another video. Thank you, everyone.